Most of the time when people talk about ESP Home, the assumption is that you are using Home Assistant as your smart home platform. Although this is a wise choice in my opinion, it's not for everyone, and it's also not for every situation. Building your own sensors has become more common, and one of the easiest ways of doing this is to use ESP Home, because you don't need to do any complicated programming. If you want a simple sensor to collect data and send it somewhere on the internet, or to another device on your network, then you might not need to have a whole smart home platform to do this. And today we're going to explore how to use ESP Home to make direct webhook requests and also to send messages to an MQTT broker. For those of you who like using Node-RED, I'll be using this to show you how the data can be received directly from the ESP device. So let's dive in. The first thing to mention is that if you use Home Assistant and ESP Home, then you can use the ESP Home add-on in Home Assistant to create devices that I'm going to talk about in this video, ones that don't talk to Home Assistant. And this is because the ESP Home firmware installed on the device doesn't actually communicate with the ESP Home add-on. But to get started from scratch, I'm going to show you how to install ESP Home on Linux into a Docker container. I've tried to make it as beginner friendly as possible, but you'll still need some basic knowledge such as how to create a Linux PC or virtual machine. For those of you who are more technical, then there are other ways you can install ESP Home, such as using a Python virtual environment, which allows you to install it on Windows or even on Mac as well. As with all of these methods though, on the surface it seems like you can just copy and paste a few commands from the documentation and you'll be up and running, but as I found creating this video, that's often not the case. So I've created a bash script which is a combination of various commands. I've tested it multiple times, so hopefully it'll allow you to get your ESP Home instance up and running as quickly as possible. Before we get stuck in, let's talk for a minute about some of the actual uses for an ESP Home device which isn't connected to Home Assistant. If you use something like Node-RED, then it's fairly obvious. You can use it to combine all of your sensor data together into one place and then create some automations. But it's also useful without things like Node-RED, so you could have things like webhooks which are fairly easy to set up generally and then you could use them with things like Microsoft Teams or Slack and then do webhook calls to these apps and then you could add family members or friends into these groups and then they could see your sensor data as well. Or you could even send data directly from one ESP device to another device. Okay so I'm now at the computer and I've got a version of Ubuntu here and you can see that I've already downloaded the ESP home install script that I was talking about earlier. And if I go to Google Chrome, which I've got installed here, then here's the script. Now, the first thing you need to do is you need to set the permissions on the script so that it can actually execute. So if we open up a terminal window and we do ls, you can see the scripts there. But if we do ls minus l, then you will see that it hasn't got execute permissions. So if we just copy this line, so if we just chmod that file to 755, then it should be executable now. So if we do that again, you can see it's got execute permissions. Now, before we actually go and install ESP Home, let's have a little quick look through the script. So you can see I've put the command here that you need to use to run the script, which you should know if you know a bit about Linux. And then what's going to happen here is, is we're going to install Docker. So I've got a fresh Ubuntu install. If you are actually using an install that's got other things as well, then you might need to do something a little bit different to this script. But this is a fresh Ubuntu install. So firstly, I'm going to remove any old Docker files though, which shouldn't be there anyway, but there's an old version of Docker and now we've got the new version of Docker. So we need to do that first. And then basically it just runs a lot of commands to install various different libraries and dependencies. And then if you look down here, you can see this is where it installs the Docker engine itself. Then we run a hello world just to make sure everything's okay. We don't really need to do that. And here is where it downloads the Docker image for ESP Home. We create a directory for it. And then we've got some commands to actually run the Docker container and get ESP Home up and running. I've done a command here whereby it will automatically load up when you restart the PC, which I think is a good idea. And then I've also given it the directory that we created here so that we know where it actually creates the files. So for example, this is where it creates the YAML file for when you create a new device. And then finally, what we want to do here is, is access it via the UI. You can access it on this PC that we've got it installed on, or via another PC as well, which I'll show you. So now let's run the script. 
You can see the first time it'll ask for your password. And then it should have the permissions to install everything. This is probably going to take five to 10 minutes to install, download all the packages and then install them. But then you should be good to go. Okay, so that now says it's complete. So let's have a little scroll up. And we can see here we've got hello from Docker. So we know that that was successful. So hopefully ESP Home was as well. So let's now open up a new window and see if we can access it. So as we can see here, we need to access it on port 6052. And here we go. We've got ESP Home up and running. And you can see that it's even discovered one of my Box 3 voice assistants. So then you can just do new device and just create a new device as usual. First time it'll ask you for your Wi-Fi credentials so that it stores it in the secrets file. But really from this point, you just need to follow my beginner's guide on ESP Home and then you'll know how to do it. There are a few things that we need to do to be able to get it to work without Home Assistant. And so that's what we're going to look at now. Now that you have it installed, you can pretty much follow my beginner's guide or my advanced guide videos on ESP Home for creating ESP Home devices. To flash the devices, you'll need to follow the method that I mentioned in my beginner's guide though, because unfortunately ESP Home only exposes unsecured HTTP connections rather than HTTPS. This means that you have to build and download the firmware bin file and then use the ESP Home Web Flasher website to upload it to your device, which is not really much extra effort. I did manage to come up with a workaround using the Nginx Proxy Manager and creating a self-signed SSL certificate, but this was far too time consuming and complicated for little benefit really, so I decided not to include it in this video. So I'm back on my Windows PC now, and you can see here that I'm accessing the ESP Home that we just installed from my Windows PC. But we're going to switch over to the Home Assistant install I've got, just because I've got a lot of ESP Home devices already set up in there, and then we can make the changes that we need to make them work without Home Assistant. So what I've done is, is I've taken my sensor from my air quality video, and then I've made some changes so that it can send messages via MQTT instead of to Home Assistant. So if I bring up the configs before and after, we can just go through the changes. So I made a couple of changes that I didn't need to make, but I just did some housekeeping around the API keys and passwords. And if you look on the right, this is the new file. You can see I've put them into the secrets file in ESP Home instead. But then you'll also see they've got some MQTT credentials now, which isn't in the old version. I also put them in the secrets file as well, so that they're not in here. And then if we scroll down a little bit, you will see that before there was an API section here. And you'll see now I've commented that out. And instead, I've just simply added this. It's just an MQTT section with the broker, which is the IP address or the URL, username and password. And then basically that is all you need to do for it to send the data to MQTT instead of Home Assistant. Just make sure you remove this section here so that the device doesn't reboot every 15 minutes, I think it is, because if it's looking for a connection for Home Assistant, then it will say, OK, I can't connect. Let's reboot and try again, basically. So let's open up MQTT Explorer. And now you can see here that it's sending the data to a topic, which is the name of the sensor. And then underneath it, it's got all the different sensor types. So I've got the three LED lights that I had on the sensor, the green, the red and the blue. I've got the binary sensor, which was the push button for the doorbell. And then I've also got the bed sensor as well, which was the pressure sensor. And then also the BME 680, which has got temperature, pressure and humidity. And then you can just look at those MQTT topics in, say, something like no dread. And then you're good to go and you don't need Home Assistant. So I'm now no dread and we want to filter by MQTT nodes. And you can see there's an in and out. So in this case, we want to get some messages from the MQTT broker. I've already configured the broker, but obviously if you haven't configured your broker, then you're going to need to put your MQTT details in here. And of course you need an MQTT broker to do this. If we go back to here, then you can see that you can actually select this option here and then press this which copies the topic to the clipboard and then we go back paste that in there let's grab a debug node so now when the temperature changes for this sensor then we should get a message come through so i'm going to try and heat up the sensor for a minute and see if we get a message through 
Okay, so I just realized I didn't copy the right topic. So I copied this top level, whereas I actually need to go down to state. So let's copy this, go back again. Let's paste this in here instead. And deploy that. And there you go. Now you can see that we've got a temperature coming through. So now let's just take one more example. We've got the push button on here, which we could pretend is a doorbell. So let's try and pick up that button press instead. So here, here's the state of the button. Let's paste this as the topic into here. And if we deploy this, then we can see that it shows off by default. Now if we press this button, you can see you've got on then off. So now we've done the MQTT example, we're going to do some changes again to the YAML config, and this time we're going to make a HTTP post request instead. Okay, so I've now configured the device to make a webhook request, as well as also connect to the MQTT broker still, because they can work side by side. One of the key differences between MQTT and HTTP for ESP Home to know is that for MQTT, it automatically sends all of the sensor data to the broker, whereas for HTTP, it doesn't do that. You have to actually specify what you want to send to what endpoint under what scenario. So if you look here, I've set the basic settings up first, so I've just done a timeout of 10 seconds. There's other options as well that you can look at there. And then if we scroll down to the button, you can see here under on press, we've got it to light the blue LED like it used to before, but now it also sends a HTTP post request as well. I've specified a URL here, but I've put it in the secrets file. I've said that the header is application JSON, so we're sending JSON data. And then here, for now, I've just done some test data just to prove that it works. I've actually set up a webhook in Home Assistant, and that's what it's sending the data to, even though we're not supposed to be doing Home Assistant stuff. But that's just the easy way of demonstrating that the webhook works. So if I now go over to Home Assistant, and you can see I've created an automation here with a webhook as an input. So basically now I should be able to press this button and it should trigger the automation. And there we go. Now if we go into traces, we should see that the data is in there and it should show test. Here we go. So the JSON is test. So obviously if we were sending sense data here, we could use that information within an automation. Being able to send webhooks from ESP Home, I think it's really powerful because it means you can send data basically to any sort of platform and it doesn't have to be a smart home platform. Hopefully you found this video useful and now have the confidence to create some smart sensors without the need for having a complicated smart home. Or maybe you just want to set some of these up in an RV or even some interesting ideas like on a motorbike. Let me know in the comments what ideas you come up with. Well, that's it for today. So please consider subscribing if you haven't already, liking the video if you enjoyed it, and thanks until next time. <laughs>